In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to you, and welcome to our service here in the parish of Abadir St. Fagan. And with me here, as well as myself, there is Father Richard as well, our parish vicar. And today, as you can see from the background, we're actually back in St. Luke's Church in Cumde, and uh, we're very pleased to be back here, just him and me. Today, of course, it is Palm Sunday, and hopefully uh, many of you have received your palm cross. Uh, if you haven't received it and you are a parishioner, then it could be in the post to you, or if you haven't one and you'd like one, just please let us know by email and we can send you one. We will be uh, blessing the palm crosses in a few minutes. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. Heavenly Father, all, all hearts, hearts are open to you. you. No, no secrets, secrets are hidden from you. you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to the part of the service where we confess our sins to Almighty God, remembering all those things that we have done wrong, whether we have said something wrong, where we hurt his creation. Let us bring them to mind now and offer them to God. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his suffering, we may share his risen life. And now if you do have your palm cross, if you could just hold them up. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, Bless these palms' crosses, that they may be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Palm Sunday. Before we do that, we are going to read the Gospel for today. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. 
This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and a coat and a foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we will have the collect. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to have our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 31 verses 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one that is dead out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and save me for your mercy's sake. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself 
taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released <clears throat> Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole co cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting th some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. 
Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Well, yesterday, as I sat down to write the sermon, I really rather began to regret suggesting to my good colleague, Reverend Peter, that he preside and I preach today. And I say this because I've always found Palm Sunday uh, a hard day to preach on. Or maybe I'm just a very bad preacher. But I find it hard for a number of reasons. First of all, you have really two focuses in the service. There is, of course, the actual events of Palm Sunday, recalled in the opening gospel, and usually reenacted by a procession around the church. And then also, of course, you have the very long Passion Gospel that we've just heard, which tells us the story of the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. So the question is, which one to focus on. And because we try and make the sermon a bit shorter on Palm Sunday due to the procession and the long Passion Gospel, it's difficult always to know what to include and what to leave out. How can you do justice to this bewildering range of events and emotions in just a few minutes? And today, of course, added to all of that, we have the weird situation that we find ourselves in with the coronavirus still having such a massive impact on all our lives. So my apologies if this sermon might be a little bit longer than usual on Palm Sunday, but I suppose it's not as though any of you have got anywhere to go, is it, really? Now, as a way out of the conundrum of what to say, I'm actually going to look at the first and second readings today from Isaiah and Philippians and then reflect on what they have to say about the events of Palm Sunday and indeed the whole passion that we're about to experience in Holy Week. 
And if there's a theme running through the first and second readings today, then it's that of the servant. But not just any servant. The two readings talk about one who is prepared to undergo suffering on behalf of others. Now, the Isaiah reading is reporting the words of the mysterious servant of the Lord. And many have speculated over the centuries as to who this might be. Some think it refers to Israel, some to the promised Messiah, some to another figure, past, present or future. Whoever it is, we see that he is the victim of attack from others. I gave my back to those who struck me. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. And yet, through all this, he maintains his confidence in God. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. And in the Philippians passage, we also hear about a servant, but this time it's clear who's being referred to. It's Jesus, of course. And Paul writes, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. He was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Yet, Paul goes on, this obedience and this suffering was the cause of his exaltation receiving the name that is above every name. Now, the theme of the suffering servant may be one that we find hard. Nowadays, having slaves or even servants is seen as a relic from a bygone era. So perhaps we find the metaphor difficult. And it becomes even harder when we think of a servant innocently suffering for our sake. It makes us think, perhaps, of the maltreatment of slaves during the slave trade era, or the victims of modern-day slavery today. How can this help us in thinking about the events of Holy Week? Well, the difference, I suppose, is that the servants in our first two readings, the mystery figure from Isaiah and Jesus, are doing what they're do, doing willingly, knowing that suffering will come their way. In the opening gospel today, we see Jesus entering Jerusalem in a triumphant way, being hailed by the crowd as king. Yet the element of being a servant is there in his mode of transport. And the quotation from the Old Testament tells us that riding a donkey is a symbol of humility. This is unlike the warrior king who would come in on a horse. And of course, Jesus enters the city knowing what lies ahead for him. He willingly goes to lay down his life for an often ungrateful world. And of course, we see Jesus' role as the suffering servant played out in such dramatic fashion in the days that follow. For me, it finds its most beautiful expression in the foot washing on Monday Thursday, as the Lord of the Universe literally takes the servant's role for his friends. And I always think that the Passion Gospel is an emotional roller coaster. Jesus' life is sold for 30 pieces of silver by one of his friends. Another friend denies even knowing him. The others flee. He is mocked, beaten up and spat upon before suffering such a public, humiliating and agonising death. The thing that we surely find hard to grasp is that he does all of this for us and is in fact exalted and becomes our Redeemer as a result. So Palm Sunday and indeed Holy Week is about realising the depth of God's love for us, expressed through Jesus' suffering service. But it also surely stands as an example for all of us, especially at this difficult time. As I was writing this, I couldn't help but be moved by the story of 
Arima Nasreen and Amy O'Rourke, the two nurses who died after contracting coronavirus while caring for patients with the disease. Many more healthcare workers will surely, sadly, lose their lives in the same way before this crisis is over. <clears throat> they, like Jesus, are willing to put themselves in danger of life and limb in order to help others. They think of themselves and their own well-being second and that of others first. They, like him, have now surely entered into glory for what they've done. And this is where true glory lies, not in fame or wealth or power or status. As we prepare to enter this holy week, may we give thanks for their sacrifice and may it encourage each of us to live our lives in self-sacrificial service of others. Amen. We're now going to say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you have promised to hear us when we pray in faith. On this Palm Sunday, we pray for your Holy Church throughout the world as it begins the solemn celebration of Holy Week, remembering our Lord's entry into Jerusalem and his sacrifice for us. We pray for Christians who are at this time separated from one another. Pray that we may nonetheless be united in spirit as we worship you. Pray for Pope Francis, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, John, Archbishop of Wales, June, our Bishop, and all the leaders of the Church as they seek to minister to their people at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. As today we recall Jesus riding into Jerusalem, hailed as King. Let us pray for all in authority in this land and throughout the world. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all in authority under her, asking your gifts of wisdom for all those charged with making important decisions at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
We pray, O Lord God, for this parish and all its people. We hold before you all those who are joining with us in worship in their homes. We pray for our neighbourhoods and our communities, for all those who are worried, anxious or afraid, that they may know the reality of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord God, we hold before you all those who are sick and suffering at this time. Especially we pray for all those who are in hospital with coronavirus, including those known to us. We give you thanks for the dedication and self-sacrifice of doctors, nurses and other healthcare workers. We pray that your healing may come to those who need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. As your Son laid down his life for us to open the way to eternal life, we pray for all those who have gone before us. We remember all those who have died recently and all who mourn for them. For all who have inspired us in the life of faith and for all those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Luke, St Fagan, St James, St Winifred and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Once we were far away from God, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of his blood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
we celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take, take this bread, we, we take, take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his commands. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who, bearing the human likeness, humbled himself and in obedience accepted death, even on death on a cross. He was lifted up from the earth that he might draw all people to himself. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us, and feed on him in our hearts with faith and thanksgiving. And now Father Richard is going to give the notices. Thank you, Reverend Peter. Yes, it wouldn't be an Anglican service, would it, um, without the notices. Uh, you might be wondering why we're back in church. As Reverend Peter said at the start, we're here in St Luke's. Um, I had a phone call from the Archdeacon uh, on Thursday or Friday, I think it was, to say that Bishop June had been in discussion with her fellow bishops and they looked at the regulations which the government had issued after the Prime Minister's statement of a week last Monday. And it does say in the fine print that although churches must be closed, it is permissible for uh, a worship leader or priest to come to a church uh, and take a service with no congregation for the purposes of live streaming. So uh, Bishop June and the other bishops said they're quite happy for that to happen. Initially we went the extreme end and said nothing at all in church. Now we've looked at the regulations and actually we can be. So it's always nice to be in church even if you're not with us to actually use the buildings for what they're meant to be used for. So that's why we're here. A uh, little word about what's going on this week. It's Holy Week of course and so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evenings uh, there's going to be an address. It was going to be given by Father David Sheen, the chaplain of Cardiff University. He's feeling unwell. Um, hopefully it's not coronavirus, but he's not taking any chances. So it's going to be me, I'm afraid. And it will be a live stream at 7 p.m. That will be from the vicarage and address, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Thursday, we will live stream the mass of the Last Supper at 7 p.m. Good Friday will be 2 p.m. 
and then Easter Eve, 8 p.m. All those details are on the website and the Facebook page and on the leaflet that we sent out with the palm crosses. And as Reverend Peter said, if you haven't had a palm cross and you'd like one, please let us know. Once again, just like to mention that if you want to uh, text a donation in place of your weekly collection, then you can text it to 70085, that's the number, 7085, and you text the word FAGAN, F-A-G-A-N, followed by the amount in figures. So, for example, FAGAN and the number 5 would be £5 to 7085. Few people have asked if you're using envelopes, the weekly envelopes, what to do with those. I encourage you to continue to put your uh, offering in each week, save them up, ready for when we come back. That will be much appreciated if you can do that. Help us continue serving the community. And today would have been the annual church meeting for St Fagan's Church. Obviously it's not taking place. We had the annual meeting for St James and St Luke's already. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say what I would have said at St Fagan's annual meeting, which is to thank everybody involved in St Fagan's church. So that's uh, our church wardens for St Fagan's, Marion and Angela, our church leadership team, um, Pat, our secretary, Sandra, who's our assistant treasurer for St Fagan's, Jonathan and Caris, our organists, our little team of servers who are doing wonders, our readers, intercessors, Eucharistic ministers, sides people, welcomers, people who do tea and coffee after the service, faith factory leaders, those who clean and look after the building, and everybody else really who's involved in any way with St Fagan's Church. I've already said the thank yous for St James and St Luke's. I wanted to say a thank you to everyone involved with St Fagans, as we're not had the chance to have our annual meeting today. But once again, please do join us during this important week, Holy Week. Please do keep safe wherever you are and keep well. Jochen Vaur, thank you. Thank you, Father Richard, for those notices. And thank you for your words of wisdom earlier as well. Always glad to sit down and listen to you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. And we're going to say the post-communion prayer for Palm Sunday. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant, and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you, and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ crucified, draw you to himself, the sure ground of faith, the firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiving, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.